Hi folks, Roland Martin here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Listen, today's topic is old school with a new school approach. It's all about spoons. How to fish a weedless spoon and how to fish a jigging spoon. Let me just get started. I tell you, there's a lot of new techniques now that really go along with an old school thing. First of all, let's talk about this weedless spoon. This lure is over a hundred years old. You're talking about old school? This is the number two Johnson spoon. It's a gold. It seems to be the most favorite color. Number two seems to be my most favorite size. And we'll doctor it up a little bit with some new school technique. Now, let's just go back and talk about some stories. Let's talk about the fact that when I was guiding at Santee Cooper, I took a guy fishing one day, old Mr. Smith, and, and I was wading in the grass beds and we took a spoon like this and, uh, and we threw it out there and I said, keep throwing in there. I see the fish moving. I see the ga grass moving. Keep throwing. He said, oh, I don't know if he'll bite. So he threw, 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 threw. Finally, he caught this eight pound bass. Well, the funny thing about it was I said, well, Mr. Smith, is, is that the biggest fish you've ever caught? He says, yeah, I think it's the biggest one I've ever caught. It's really good. I said, well, what do you think about the, the Johnson spoon pattern? And he said, son, let me tell you something. He says, I'm 76 years old, and the Johnson Spoon was my father's favorite lure. Now, this was 30 years ago. We're talking about a lure that's like 100 years old. Anyway, it's one of my favorite lures. In fact, the biggest string of bass I ever caught in my life, 10 bass that weighed 87 pounds, was caught on this black Johnson Spoon. And we'll talk about that, too. Okay, let's doctor it up. Let's get some new school. Let's, let's talk about the spoon itself. The spoon is a weedless lure that comes through the hydrilla, it comes through the bulrushes, it comes through the logs. It's just about the most weedless lure that there ever was. But some of the problems are, how do you hook the fish if it's so weedless? You know, when the fish bite this thing, you know, are they going to get hooked? Well, let's address that first. Let's, let's, talk about a, let's talk about the hook. And if you notice the hook, that's a standard hook like out of the thing. You notice it's kind of coming down, the hook point comes down towards the eye. Let's just do something here. Let's, sp let's spread that out just a little teeny bit. Okay, I've raised it up some. I raised the hook a little bit. Okay. Now the hook has come up a little bit. Okay. Now you get the whole weed guard kind of at an angle like that, about a quarter of an inch over the hook point. Let's talk about the hook point itself. Now that's a plated, a gold-plated spoon. It's actually really gold-plated. And so consequently, this one's pretty sharp, but sometimes they get dull. Okay, let's just solve that problem real quick. Let's take a hook hone of any sort, and let's do a triangular cut, a triangular sharpen. I'm going to take this hook hone, and I'm going to come at, a, at about a 60 degree angle right here and just come right down level. I'm, I'm holding the hone flat with the hook. Okay, flat with the hook and just go back and forth. Okay, flat with the hook. I can turn it around this side and I go flat with the hook again. And I can just go right up and down. Anyway, we keep checking that out. Oh, that's real sharp right now. But you can get it as sharp. You can get it as sharp as you want. Okay, okay. That's the, that's the first step. Now we're talking about an old school lure that's a hundred years old versus some new new school techniques. Now, okay, okay, let's let's talk about the compliment. You don't often throw a spoon. I can tell you so many stories about here at Lake Okeechobee, all the spoon fish I've caught. In fact, when I came down and bought this marina years and years ago, there was a uh, Tony Tulis had a had a, a weekly tournament in the summertime. And almost every year, the big fish of the week, each week would be a different tournament. Each week, each fish would often be a Johnson spoon, this number two gold Johnson spoon here on Lake Okeechobee. Now that was, that was 30 years ago. And for some reason, and I don't understand the reason, people think that there's newer and better lures. And there are newer and better lures. But there's some like this old time number two Johnson gold spoon that's a classic. 
It always work. It's a wonderful lure for the heavy hydrilla. It's a wonderful lure for the lay pads. There's hardly any lure any more weedless. There's hardly any more lure that's ever caught as many big bass as this Johnson spoon. I'm telling you, here in South Florida, it's a testimony. I've, I've caught them on Lake Kissimmee. I've caught monsters. I've caught them at Santee Cooper. I've caught them. All, I've caught them at Toledo Bend. I've caught them all over the country on the on this Johnson spoon, and I still do. Okay, let's doctor it up. Let's take a good skirt. Now, years ago, we had rubber skirts. We just had just plain rubber skirts. Now we have silicone skirts. It's, it's a brand new sk uh, skirt. It has more action. And I just take the skirt and, and, and on a gold spoon. I just love a, 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 a chartreuse and white. It's just chartreuse and white. That seems to be my favorite color. Okay. Now let's couple that up with some really new school stuff. Number one, braid. Braid is so important. All the guys that are fishing spoons and all the guys that are fishing frogs and all the guys that are fishing that heavy cover, they're all using braid. And the very minimum that I'd suggest in say the light hydrilla and maybe the light eelgrass is 50 pound. That's the lightest. I go to 65. This is 65 and, it, and for lily pads and, 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 and heavy cover, I'm telling you, that 65 will do the job. It sets the hook so much better. It's so much more sensitive. If some comes up and hits it sideways and kind of swim towards you, you'll feel it. And here's the other big deal. Back years ago, we didn't have rods with nice long handles. A majority of our casting rods were pistol grip and they were shorter handles and stuff. Now, I can take this Emperor Series by favorite. It's a perfect, perfect spoon rod. It says a long handle. I can put it in my stomach. I have these these little buttons. These uh, well, these are the. Uh, uh, I can put that off. Okay, that's a cushion, and it goes on the end of the rod, just an add-on. But it helps with setting the hook. I can really, really power it. This happens to be a 741 heavy action Emperor series by by a uh, favorite. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spoon rod. And it, it casts really, really well. And so it's a seven, almost seven and a half feet long. You can put it in your stomach, you can really it. So now with braid, with a straightened out hook a little bit, with everything just right, you can really set the hook. But remember, this is old school lure that really, really is effective. And right now today, you're talking about a great lure for South Florida. You're talking about a great lure for weeds in general. You're talking about any kind of, you can go to Minnesota. You can go to all over the country where you have lily pads and hydrilla grass and catch them on a Johnson spoon. Don't put that out of your tackle box. Put one in your tackle box. This is really, really, really a good lure for shallow cover water. Okay, that's one type of spoon. What's another type of spoon? Well, let me go into... Uh, a little story. This is a Hopkins spoon. It's a jigging spoon. And it's, it's meant to fish and jig in deeper water. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet of water. Now years ago, back in the 60s and 70s, I was a fishing guide on Santee Cooper in South Carolina. Now Santee Cooper is the home of the landlocked striped bass. And back then we had half the time I would be guiding for a party of, in a bigger boat, would be guiding for a party of, of striper fishermen. They wanted to catch striped bass. Well, one of the best ways to catch them in the summertime is to watch your depth finder. We had flashing depth finders in, They're not, not as good as we had today, but we could see the, the, the striped bass in schools. We could see the bottom and we could see the flashes in between. And we'd take a, Johnson, we'd take a Hopkins spoon, this is a Hopkins 75, and we'd drop it down. We were using 20 pound, um, at the time, we were using a 20-pound monofilament, and, and we did a lot of things wrong. And since then, there's some things that I'm going to do as new school that really can help you out on this. Number one, we have better depth finders. We can see the fish better, so we know where to jig. Now, in the process of catching striped bass, I drop down into the stump fields. I drop down into points. I drop down into old creek channels on Santee, and also with some house foundations. And I noticed if I jigged it just right, for striped bass, they want fast moving lures and they're up in the middle column and they're up off the bottom. Here's the bottom and, and they're up five or six feet. So you jig a spoon way up high and you lift your rod way up and you get the lure up to eight or ten feet and it flutters down and the stripers see it all flutter and they grab it. Okay, that's not a bass. That's not a largemouth. That's not the way you catch largemouth. And I, I kind of 
did this by accident. I'd get in these house foundations at Santee, this is 30 years ago, and I'd start jigging the same striped, striped bass lure, this Hopkins 75, and I'd just jig it a little bit off the bottom, just short, flat, like that. Bam, I was catching great big old bass. Now here's the deal. I remember this one tournament, it's so funny. I had the big string and I won the tournament. I had a 40 pound string or it was just a gigantic string. A bunch of eight pounders, seven pounders. But anyway, that was beside the point. How I caught them was I pulled out to this house foundation and I could see the stripers on the depth finder all up above the house foundation. And I couldn't see the bass because they were maybe in the rocks. So I dropped the spoon down to the bottom and I just jig it up a little bit about a foot and then I let it fall again. Now if a striper was over here and saw it jig up, he'd come swimming by. But by the time he'd get here, it'd be laying on the bottom and it didn't interest him anymore. So he'd swim. They got to move all the time. Stripers don't stop. They just came cruising around. They never do stop their body. They just always are moving around. So by the time they, they see it jig up just a foot, just a small amount, by the time they come after it, it's, it's on the bottom and they don't want it, so they swim on. A largemouth bass, however, is different. Here's what a largemouth bass does, and here's how I won the tournament, is you take the spoon, you jig it up about a foot, you let it sit on the bottom. Now bass can stop. So they come, they come cruising up, and they see, they see it jig off the bottom and stop, and they come over and they, they get about a couple inches from it. And they're looking at it. The stripers have gone on, but the bass are looking at it. The second time you jig it up, they grab it, boom. And they usually hit it on the fall, so I jig it just a small amount and kind of you know, let, it, let it flutter down. Now, that's a technique. So I don't jig high and real high in the, in the water column for, for, for bass. I jig low to the bottom. Now, when I see them, say, suspended, I, I might jig low and I might even jig it a little bit higher. But, but basically, when the fish are on the bottom, on stumps, on creek channels, and all the brushy conditions that, say, you'd find, I don't jig it real severely. I jig it kind of slow and easy. Okay, let's fix this spoon so it's really a bass lure. It's, it's, it's not really advertised as a bass lure. It's kind of advertised as a saltwater lure. It's a Hopkins 75, mainly for striped bass and bluefish and all kind of stuff, but it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful deep largemouth bass structure lure. Now let me show you what I do with it. The first thing I do is I take that old hook off. It's a real big saltwater hook that's just real big and bulky. And I replace it with a good new school Gamagatsu. That's that wide gap hook. It's just sharp as can be. And look how sharp I think it's just super sharp. It's just, I mean to tell you, they hit that thing, it just, it just gets them every time. The second thing I do is if you notice on this Hopkins spoon, it doesn't have a split ring. It, do, it just doesn't come in with a split ring. So you can buy split rings at the store for just a few cents. I take a split ring and I put it on the spoon. And it's really easy to do. In fact, all I do to put it on the spoon is, a, is I take the split ring and I put my uh, knife, any kind of knife, into the split ring like this. Okay, I take the split ring and just kind of, it's just easy to do, it just takes a second. And just put the Put the, uh, put the split ring in there. I'll take my pliers and just rotate it a little bit. Doop, doop, doop. Now we have the split ring on there. That makes a big difference because what happens, and particularly with monofilament, not so much with braid, but with monofilament, even with 20 or 25 pound monofilament like we often used to use, this, this would kind of cut the line. So the split ring makes it a lot stronger, okay. Okay, now we're getting there. Now with the, with the hook itself, we change it, like I said, to that EWG, really super strong and, and very sharp uh, bass hook. It's kind of even a little bigger, if you know, well, it's about the same size. Anyway, now we got the spoon really doctored up. Okay, let's, let's talk about the second thing. Let's talk about a rod. Years ago, we had the monofilament lines, and that's all right. Monofilament can still work, but braid is so much more sensitive. It sets the hook so much better. You can feel those little taps so much. It's just, it's way ahead of the game. Way ahead of the game. And the new rods, these new, these new Emperor Series rods, they're just perfect for jigging. 
There's just nothing any better. So now, when I go to the deep lakes, and I still fish a few tournaments, I go to a lake like Chickamauga. This last year, I went to Chickamauga. I took a Johnson's, I mean a Hopkins spoon like this, got on the river ledge, and I caught several bass. I didn't catch a whole lot, but I placed pretty high, and I placed to the money. On a couple, a couple of the fish, I caught them on Alabama rigs too, and I caught them on other lures, but I did catch a couple now just this uh, just this year on this Hopkins 75. Now there's other jigging lures. That's my favorite right here. The Hopkins 75 is my absolute favorite for largemouth. But there's other lures, and here's a slab spoon, I think that Bass Pro Shop sells. I'm not real sure, it's a different color. But anyway, it's it's got a good hook and it's got a nice swivel on it to start with. Okay. That's the slab, it's lead. In fact, it bends if you, if you really want it to bend. And some people even bend these spoons to make them kind of do funny things when they sink. And get around boat docks in deep water on, say, Table Rock Lake or around the big timber. The other thing you can do with, a, with any kind of spoon is that you get out in deep water off the bluffs, say, at, at the White River Chain of Lakes, that's Bull Shoals or Table Rock or, or Beaver Lake, and you take a spoon like this and you can see the timber. You can see the trees underneath you, and you can maybe see a fish or two in this tree. If you're vertical, if you're completely vertical and you're not at an angle, you can jig it all through that, that tree. Because what happens is that when you drop that spoon down, it gets caught on a limb. It's caught on a limb, okay? You pull high and it's caught. But you keep jigging it back and forth, and it finally falls back over this way, and it comes off, comes off the limb. So the point is, you can keep jigging, and 99.9% and .9 of the time, the lure will come off. The only exception to that is if it's a tree that's been fished a lot and there's monofilament hung in that tree or any kind of line that's hung in the tree, if this spoon gets in the line, it's curtains. But again, if I use heavy enough line, what I like to do when I'm jigging a spoon, particularly in the timber, I'm using at least 50 pound braid and a lot of times 65 pound braid because if I get hung up, in that, in that line, I could pull it loose. Often I could break the line, break the other line. Okay, so now with this jigging spoon, let me just explain the, what, the technique that I use. I'll pretend I don't have a jigging spoon on here, but just pretend like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm over some trees in, in the middle of Table Rock. And what I'll do is I'll drop the spoon down and I'll just, you know, drop it down and I get it down to the right depth. And when I jig it up, okay, here's an important thing. If you give it complete slack on the fall, what happens with that spoon is the spoon flutters too much. In other words, if you give it complete slack and it falls, it, it flutters like this and it gets, a, it, the hook gets around the line. If you put just a hair of back pressure, in other words, as it goes back down, if you follow it with your rod tip, just a little teeny bit, just a small amount, it minimizes that hook getting hooked on the line. And so that's a big deal, because once it's hooked on the line, then it's all crooked and it won't, it won't work, you never catch them that way. But, you know, you spend a lot of time reeling it back and forth and straighten it up. So don't give it completely slack line. Jig it up. Again, in the timber and trees, I don't jig it for bass. I don't jig it a whole lot. I'll jig it up a little bit and then just kind of follow it back down. Just kind of almost jig it back down. But anyway, the whole thing about spoon fishing is the small little 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 strike that you may may get. These uh, these strikes are very uh, very subtle, and with the new braided lines, it's so much better. And so anyway, that's that's kind of uh, the the whole gamut. Oh, oh, I was getting into spoons. I was talking about jigging spoons. Here's that, you know, slab spoon. And here's a crocodile spoon. It's kind of a cool deal. It's, it's, a, it's a spoon that, that's been around for 30 or 40 years. Again, it's sometimes used salt water. There's a 10 or 15 different good jigging spoons, but this crocodile can be pretty good. Now there's even the big nickel spoon. I don't have one here. I've got one downstairs. On, on places like Kentucky Lake, on places like uh, uh, all, all, all many of the, uh, uh, well, all the southern lakes now, the bigger spoon, and it's like twice this big. It's, it's a nickel spoon. Some of them are six inches long. Some of them are even seven inches long. That's a big deal, and that's sometimes a casting deal. You don't often, on those big spoons, you don't often jig it straight under the boat. I'm talking about these Hopkins 75s, and, and particularly this, this, uh, this little uh, uh, 
uh, slab spoon, you jig pretty much vertically. On the great big spoons, like the big nickels, you throw it out there and you actually reel it in. It kind of it comes in and you maybe drop it down and you do it. So it's, it's a little bit different. It's kind of a, a cast and retrieve type of a, of a spoon. But again, it's a very effective thing. And that's kind of a new school lure. The big, giant casting spoons are, are a big deal. Now, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me back up a second. And I was talking about the other kind of spoon a minute ago. And you know, I showed you the my number one choice, and that's the gold number two with the chartreuse and, and uh, white silicone skirt. It's really, really a great compliment. I've straightened the hook out. I've sharpened the hook. I've moved the weed guard. It's ready to go, ready to catch fish. I have my braided line. Let's take another lure. Let's take this black spoon. It's something hardly anybody ever uses. Look, it's got a worm on the back. You talking about deadly? The biggest string of fish I ever caught in my entire life. I mean, I had three bass over 10 pounds that day. It was at Santee Cooper in 1968. I caught monster string. Anyway, I took the, a black worm like this, a black about five inch worm. You put about a five inch worm on there, run it the same way. And now instead of fluttering, you know, this spoon comes through the lilies and the grass and it flutters and it makes a great big sound. Sometimes I'll even pull some of that skirt off. Sometimes it's too much skirt. But anyway, this worm, it snakes through there. It's, it's so tantalizing to see this black spoon coming through there and snaking through there. It doesn't catch as many bass. I'd say you catch more bass on the, on the gold spoon, but you catch bigger bass on that black one snaking through the heavy grass and, will, and, and, and lily pads. Okay, folks, that's a few things about spoons. It's an old school lure with new school tr tricks and techniques that I've, I've incorporated now in my spoon fishing. I still use spoons constantly. One of the best, most favorite lures I've ever used. You need to catch, catch some bass. You need to really get some confidence in a spoon. Get some, self, some number two Johnson spoons, for example. Get yourself some Hopkins. None of these lures, by the way, that I'm talking about, do I have a sponsor with. I'm just talking I'm just talking because I like the lure. I've been using them for many, many years, and I just, I just love the lures themselves. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my compliment of, of both jigging spoons and weedless spoons, and uh, I really appreciate you watching these uh, YouTubes. Uh, I, I really have a lot of fun. It's, I'm an old school teacher originally, and so I've done a lot of seminar work and talked a lot about these same things over the years, and I enjoy it. And I enjoy teaching you a few things if, if you listen and it's really appreciate you listening. And so thanks again. We'll see you again soon. And be sure to hit that likes button. Hit that likes button. Subscribe. Okay. We'll talk to you soon.